Hey guys, what are the five things you can do to speed up your web development process? Actually, any type of development. When you're a developer, one of the key things you want to be doing is working on your speed of development without sacrificing quality. So here's five basic things that you, that you can do. This is for people new to the game. You just started out. Maybe you finished my freelance course. Not my freelance course. That's a good course too. But maybe you finished my full stack course or my Python course and you're ready to get your hands dirty in real projects. So these are, actually I cover these things in the courses, but here's some tips for you. Number one, use a good IDE. IDE is an integrated development environment. These are basically programs that allow you to write code more easily. So for Python, you got PyCharm. For PHP, you got PHP Storm. If you're using Ruby, you should actually change to another language. Just kidding. Um, and there are many other IDEs out there that you should review. If you're doing the web stack, you could look at uh, good IDEs in terms of uh, text editing for your HTML and CSS. One that's very popular is Sublime Text, but there are many others out there. So you look around, check out the reviews, but finding a good program, a good IDE or a good code editor that will speed up your work a lot and will help you reduce the number of coding errors you'll produce because IDEs will be checking your code as you go, helping you to write code as you go. Good thing. Number two, try to take projects that fit into your current workflow and uh, framework. So this has to do more with freelancers. And one of the tricks to being a very profitable freelancer and you want all kinds of details, you can check out my course below, shameless plug, um, is you want to find projects that fit into your workflow. So maybe you've carved out a freelance business where you work exclusively with, uh, I don't know, WordPress and certain WordPress plugins. And that's what the type of work you should work on using those tools because you know them really well, you've worked out all the bumps in the road, if you will, and so it's going to be fast. Or maybe you're a Python Django web stack developer. Again, find projects that align with, which, with what you do. It could be more specialized in terms of the type of businesses you work with. Maybe you, maybe you could specialize in putting out websites for restaurants, for coffee shops or something, where restaurants or coffee shops or any, types of, any type of specialized, we'll say restaurant you know they're going to need certain things on their website. They're going to need a menus. They may need an ordering system. Who knows? A booking system, et cetera, et cetera. When you've specialized in a particular niche that way, you can produce the material, you can produce the code, you can produce the sites, you can produce the apps much more quickly. Number three, leverage and get to know mature frameworks and libraries. Try to stay away from cutting edge technology unless they provide some unique advantage that you cannot find in some more mature tech. So what do I mean by mature technology? I'm talking about frameworks that have been vetted and proven and the libraries are not changing every three months, et cetera, et cetera. This way you're not spending all kinds of time in configuration hell and you're just building your apps for your clients. Yes, you may have to forego some 5% advantage by using a cutting edge framework, but you're probably going to save yourself a huge number of headaches just trying to get things to work. That's just the nature of the game. Number four, you want to get UI mockups, user interface mockups in front of clients as soon as possible. And so you can iterate quickly. Now I'm assuming you're doing visual type of coding here. You're not writing SQL code or something. You're doing uh, web apps, or maybe you're doing an iOS app, uh, you maybe do Android app development, who knows, but you have some sort of UI. Whenever you have some sort of UI, you want to create mockups as quickly as possible. You could do this first pen and paper, and then you can uh, show them just the basic structure of where things are going to be. And then once you get an approval on that, then you can take that, find some templates, that add some uh, some aesthetic to it to make it look good. Then you can present some templates. Say here, we're going to start off with this. We can move from here. What do you think of this color scheme? What do you think of this structure here? The point is you want to get these things going as quickly as possible because showing your clients the user interface is the quickest way for them to understand and see what you are building because the UI reflects the uh, underlying functionality of your app, right? So if you're building an e-commerce app, 
the UI, the, the shopping cart UI will show whether or not there's coupons in there or tax calculations in there, et cetera. So the UI really reflects what the data is going to be like and what the middle layer of code is going to be like as well. So you, UI, show UIs as quickly as possible, and it's going to go a long way to speeding up your development process because a big part of development is getting that feedback from your clients. So it's, quick, it's important that you get that feedback as quickly as possible. Number five, my last tip, don't be a perfectionist with your code the first time out. Version one of any software is going to require many, 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 many changes over time because the first version of a software, a lot of it is speculation on your part as a developer or as or maybe for your client. A lot of it is speculation in terms of what they're going to want and need in the end. So if you're writing super rock-solid code and perfected code to squeeze out that last 20% or 5% of performance gain, then you're going to be spending a lot more time to get that app that much better, to get your code that much better. So this is for the first version. First version. Uh, second, and third, fourth... With each, with each new version of the software, it will become more and more refined. And then at one point, when you really understand what ultimately the software has to do, what the function has to be like in the end, then you can sit down and write something rock solid. Now, I just did that with Studio Web 4, where we did a rewrite from scratch after seven years with the old code base. So we wrote this code much more robustly, if you will, and it's much more solid in terms of error reporting and so forth than the previous versions because now we know exactly what Studio Web has to do and how it has to do it. You've seen this with Apple when they went from OS 9 to OS 10. They did a rewrite from scratch for several reasons. But one of the reasons was that now, you know, all the operating system in terms of how a Mac OS supposed to work. It was very solid, very clean in terms of the functionality. So now they had they could build it from scratch. Well, it was based on free BSD, but they were able to build OS X uh, anew with a, f with a real good understanding of what the hardware was going to be and what they needed to support in uh, the operating system. Same thing uh, with any app, really. So there you go. Uh, I'll just reiterate the five steps. Number one, get a good IDE or code editor that will speed up your workflow because of code completion and auto correction stuff. Try to take projects that fit into the current workflow and framework that you have established. This is more for freelancing, but you don't want to take on projects that are all over the place. You don't want to do an iOS project in one uh, one gig and then do a PHP web stack in another gig, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you can avoid it, better to just stick to one thing and get really good, have a really refined workflow. Now you could branch out when you get bored or if you, you feel you need to, the market will tell you. But again, try to find projects fit into your current workflow. Leverage, number three, leverage mature frameworks and libraries. Stay away from cutting edge because you're going to be spending a lot of time doing configurations and dealing with conflicts and so forth. Number four, get user interface mockups in front of clients as soon as possible and then iterate quickly. Uh, this is very important. As I said, it's going to allow you to get that important feedback from your clients, which is uh, a big bottleneck in any app development. And finally, number five, don't be a perfectionist when developing new apps new web apps, new apps. Don't be a perfectionist. Just get it into the hands of users as quickly as possible. Get the feedback and then iterate quickly so that uh, you figure out and solidify what the actual use case is, the final uh, version of the software, what it's going to be in the end. And then once you have that, then you can start writing super locked down code. Because when you're writing locked down code, it takes a lot more time. So there you have it. Those are my five tips to speed up your web development workflow, although some of these, a lot of these tips apply to any type of software development. All right, I hope you find this useful. Bye-bye.